What's up, guys? Tech Peasants Podcast, Episode 6. And what's this? We sound really, really good. No, we don't. Oh. Oh. All right. That, we don't sound good, everyone. Go home. You sound like shit. All right. So uh, in between episode five of Tech Peasants podcast and this episode, I decided to fight the I decided to fight the good fight and I sacrificed my PC money um, in order to get for us a sound mixer and separate microphones, XLR support. So we all have our own microphones. And so um, I'm not going to sound like I'm five miles away. And Savanti doesn't sound uh, Savanti's not going to sound like he's in a tin can and Daniel's not going to be <laughs> a mouse. Ew. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, we we've we've improved our audio quality. We're we don't suck anymore. He stole these off a of hobo. I Shut up. <laughs> I saw it my own eyes. Shut up. <laughs> All right, so welcome to the Tech Peasants Podcast, where we occasionally talk about video games. Savanti, what are we doing today? Well, first of all, we need to address that we're down one member. Um, Cooper Clan is at work. Mm-hmm. He died. He also died at work. So funerals tomorrow. <laughs> so. <laughs> Only three of us this time, but at the same time, we have a lot of topics this week, so it'll mm-hmm. still be a full, full show. So we're going to go ahead and trek on without uh, Cooper Clan, unfortunately. Uh, Kevon will be missed. So uh, let's go ahead and start with our first topic. So right. Well, before we even do the topics, I just want to give a quick shout out to Jack Move Johnny. I follow this guy on Twitter or YouTube, and I watch him on Weapon Wheel Podcast. He basically shills for him. I don't shill for anyone, sir. Uh, not yet, anyway. The podcast has become do, popular enough. Although I do support enough. a will on Patreon, but still, that's more than just all of them. But um, cool thing, he had a stream yesterday. It was a giveaway of PSN codes, and I actually won a $20 code from him. I put it in my account and everything, so I'm going to wait till the next sale, and I'll buy something with that. Nice. The question he asked was, what's the one game he has pre-ordered? And no one knew what the hell he was talking about, because that's a crazy question to ask. I knew he likes he likes indie games and stuff like that. So he gave a tip saying, um, my homie Jarvis told me about this game. And I'm thinking, who the hell is Jarvis? Then I was like, well, Housemark got a guy called Eugene Jarvis to help them make their new game, Next Machina. So I put that down, and that was the right answer. So and you just spoiled the answer. It's already done. I, I don't care. It's already done. You've already I, spoiled I the care. quiz. You've already spo- you've you've completely defunct the state quiz, uh, the state test. We have to redo Run the entire me, thing. Motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, because well, I'm about to out. school you, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But yeah, anyway, so that that was cool. Also, check out next market that the game looks great. I've never heard of it. It's um, I, I, Eugene Jarvis made another arcade game. I forgot what it was called, but um. Just look it up um, when you get a chance, guys. It's called Next Machina. It looks awesome. All it right. comes out this summer on PS4 and PC. And look, I'll bring it up, bring it up again later on because that's another topic. So I'm um, on to the first topic. We're going to get the big thing out of the way first. The Xbox Scorpio had its official specs revealed by Digital Foundry. Ooh. And it looks pretty cool, if I do say so myself. So I'm going to bring up the Eurogamer article. Oh, look at that. Word says it can't open up the internet. Well, that's fine. You're stupid. Yeah, I mean, I spent like a good 20 <laughs> minutes preparing this soundboard, and you didn't even have the decency to prepare things on your end. I'm prepared. Yeah, Windows what wasn't. Fucking cock. Uh, good point. You know, I, th- that's not his. Not that's not his fault. No, it's it's his Windows. Fault. You're a fucking cock. No, I seriously had Windows crash on me because it needed to update. Because you're a fucking cock. <laughs> I know. All right. I mean, come on. Fuck me for wanting to play ukulele. I mean, come on. Mm-hmm. How are you doing, Savanti? Apparently, my internet's down. Or did you not have the stuff memorized? I you did. know, I spent I you know I spend a lot of time to improve the quality of our podcast, and then you come in here. And Jacob is sucking his own dick with this new equipment. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't suck my own dick. I have titanium rods in my spine. Remove them. And I'm well, uh, you know, while I'm at it, I might as well just remove some ribs so I can just immediately get down there and start. Holy pussies do that. You gotta be a real man. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Shut up. You gotta go balls well, deep. It, oh god. <laughs> well, internet's down in action, so I'll go off memory. The Scorpio CPU. That's the, wrong. It's wow. the only downside of the console. It's using the same AMD Jaguar CPU clocked at two point. 3 gigahertz, which is point why? Two, which is point two higher than the 
PS4 Pro. Ooh. So oh my God. not really that much of an improvement. And it's the AMD Jack R CPU was never good in the first place. So that's the only, that's the only downside though. Mm. They have 12 gigs of GDDR5 RAM. That's actually pretty good. Making the jump from the 8 um, gigs of GDDR3 that the original Xbox One and the Xbox One S had. The pro- the um, GPU is a, what Digital Foundry said, must be a custom RX 480 with 40 compute units running it over 1100 um, megahertz. Hmm. Which is actually very strong. That is 6 mm-hmm. teraflops exactly. I mean, for comparison, the PS4 Pro had 30, 36 compute units running at 911 megahertz. So, good good GPU choice. And the cooler inside is actually some new kind of, well, high quality kind of cooler. Yeah, right. It actually, the schematic looks pretty cool. Really? Hmm. Yeah. So, that was the CPU, GPU, RAM. We don't know the price. We don't know the hard drive space. But they did show off something that was cool. They didn't show any footage yet, but they showed Forza Horizon 6. My bad, For- Forza 6, Motorsport 6, the main Forza franchise games. They ported it to Scorpio within two days and had it running at 4K Xbox settings using only around 60 or 70% of the GPU. Hmm. Then they cranked everything up to ultra settings, the equivalent of if you play it on PC and max it out. I think it was 88% utilization. Hmm. And Interesting. That's, what, and that's in like two days, no optimization or anything like that. Wow. That's wow. pretty darn good. So very impressive. Um, I don't think this is enough to run every game at 4K60 like I, they said. I don't. Oh, definitely because, like, not. Because, yeah, this is strong, but people are forgetting the fact that games just aren't optimized. There are some games that just will not work. For example, Quantum Break. I really doubt that's going to be 4K60. No. Oh, God, no. What's actually interesting is that uh, Ukulele is optimized for 4K60 um, on oh, PC. Yeah. And it's sort of okay on um, PlayStation 4. Um, it's 30 frames there. Yeah. Um, it doesn't actually have native support with the PlayStation Pro, so yeah. there's no 4K. So it's 1080p30. And um, the Scorpio is even worse uh, because it actually Xbox. does have frame hitches. Yeah. The original Xbox? Yeah, I don't think it has Scorpio support. Scorpio's not out yet, so we can't know what Scorpio's going to run. Oh, duh. But what am I talking about? I saw a Digital Foundry's video on that. Like, on PC, it runs good. I think they had a 90 Ti doing 4K Mm -hmm. 60. And um, then for, like, 1080p 60, they could get it on most cards, most modern-day cards. All right. Easily. Um, I have something to add about ukulele, but uh, we're just going to wait until uh, later on in the show because we have a whole topic dedicated to ukulele. Yeah. So, um, Scorpio looks cool. All the games under the Universal Windows platform should be 4K 60 or at least native 4K solid 30. Multiplayer most likely will all be 4K 60. Nice. But these third-party games, I mean, the PS4 Pro has had lazy patches. I expect that not to change with the Scorpio. So just you people expecting 4K on all games, lower your expectations. The machine might very well be capable of it, but the game will just be an unoptimized piece of shit and it won't happen. Well, goddamn. Once again, I point to Quantum Break. <laughs> good point, good um, point. And then games that are optimized were just really demanding, like Dying Light. That's not going to be 4K. Mm-hmm. I mean, on console now, they have to put those settings at below the PC's low for some God. things. Oh, my that, God. That's ridiculous. And it still looked decent on console, but yeah, the PC version is night and day. So, um, yeah, that's cool. And we also found out more about what the Scorpio supports. It has support for HDMI 2.1, which enables... Resolution of 8K at 60 frames per second, Damn. or 4K at 120 hertz. Can you explain to me again why exactly we need 8K? Like, I what's the whole proofing. point? I guess future proofing for proofing. what? We can't see above 4K technically. Um, it depends on how big the screen is. Well, I I would say it's the pixel density. Yeah, that that's the most important the thing. Because like 1080p. On the screen that's like five inches, it's gonna look better than like 4K on a screen that's like that's, 80 inches. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because the pixels are freaking huge. Yeah, so it's all about that. But I guess for like, I think 8K is literally designed for like almost building sized screens. So yeah, like I guess if movies ever what get a f- huge upgrade and features. Who the fuck go is like, gonna be projecting Halo onto the side of a building? <laughs> Those Xbox fans are devoted. Well, I, I guess that wasn't a go. Who, who's gonna project. Um, 
Ori in the Blind Forest onto the side of a building. Yeah, it is a work of art. Good point. Octodad, that least catch. Someone that Shit, pie. that's even more of a work of art. <laughs> Fuck, I'm just stepping in a right and left. All right, let's just move on then. Well, if, um, so HDMI 2 one is cool. Um, that'll easily take advantage of the new TVs perfectly. I don't even think the Pro has support for 2.1. I know it has 2.0 support. Mm. And it supports free, free sync. Which, if you don't know what FreeSync is, it's more or less AMD's answer to G-Sync. If you don't know oh, what G-Sync yeah. is... What is G-Sync? G-Sync is this technology that NVIDIA puts into monitors that essentially eliminates all tearing right. and smooths out yes, frame rates yes, that are I lower. Remember. Yeah, so I remember that now. And computers. FreeSync is more or less AMD equivalent. It's a very good feature to have. I think I was asking like two years ago why these consoles don't have FreeSync since they have AMD GPUs. So Scorpio gets around the applause for that because that's a very neat feature. Now, even if a port is kind of lazy, we can at least never see screen tearing again. I actually really hate VSync because every time oh, I have VSync is bad. If I have yeah. every time I have VSync on, it just destroys everything. Yeah, VSync is bad. G Sync allows you to um. Again, I'll just I'll talk ab- again. I'll talk about it later when we get to the ukulele topic. Yeah. Also, for um, if you hate VSync, I recommend Fast Sync. That fixes all the problems. What's that? Fast sync allows you to uncap the frame rate, but it still outputs the picture without the negative effect of running at a higher refresh rate than your your display. Mm, okay. Like Battlefield oh, One, yeah. for example, I have on fast sync, so I'm getting like 84 frames, but it's still smooth like 60, and it takes away the input that you get with V Sync. Interesting. So yep, yeah, that's the Xbox One um, Scorpio. Hopefully, we'll know the full name at um, E3. They did reveal recently that they're going to fully announce it at E3. Nice. And so no event beforehand. So hopefully they don't spend too much time on it at E3 because all we need is the price, name, and the games. Most importantly, the games. Yeah, so most importantly, the games. So this spec isn't going to be, these specs aren't going to be crap if um there's nothing to play with it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So that's the Scorpio off my memory because my internet's down or this laptop is shit. Either way, on to the next topic. Any well, first off, any more closing thoughts on the Scorpio? No, not really. On yeah, all, not really. I mean, it's pretty much what I expected. There's really I... nothing for me to add. In all honesty. All right. All right then on to the next topic: G two A and Gearbox. Oh, oh my! Yeah. Interesting things happened with this. It started out with Gearbox publishing Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition, which, if you've never played Bulletstorm, play it. It is a beautiful game. Yeah, it was. It's criminally underpopular for whatever yeah. reason. I don't know why. I have no idea. But um, I'm glad it's coming back. Uh, hopefully, this sells good, so we can get a sequel. They brought back this as a remaster, full clip edition. They partnered up with G2A to release. Yeah, with, to release a limited edition type deal that had like a, I think it had like a statue and stuff with it. Oh, it also has uh, the Duke Nukem um, yeah, that DLC. Yeah, was bonus if you yeah. got that. Mm. So they did this and then um, Total Biscuit um, pretty much made a tweet saying that he's dropping all coverage for future Gearbox games. Damn. Saying that he doesn't support crooks. So then um, Gearbox actually contacted him asking why and if he could provide proof that G2A is a bad company. In other words, him do their work for them. Yeah, to which he <laughs> easily found some dirt on them within a few seconds mm-hmm. and quickly convinced them that, oh, shit, we made a mistake partnering with these people. So then instantly Gearbox like issued, um, worked with Total Biscuit to make a list of demands that they needed Gear, um, G2A to work with. Or else they would pull out the, with the contract because they made the contract in a way they can easily back out. And mm-hmm. they gave G2A 24 hours to respond. I don't remember all these demands, but I remember one of them was allow the G2A shield to be um, free. Because on G2A, mm-hmm. the shield pretty much guarantees yeah. you don't lose money if you buy a key that's actually fraudulent and, like and doesn't work. It's like a dollar more or something. Or, it's like $3, or $3 more. $3, yeah. And there's like a that. shield service that you can buy, which is like a subscription yeah, that's a for subscription. all. Which that, that by itself is shady because it's almost impossible yeah. to cancel it. Uh-huh. Yeah. They wanted them to do that. That's how they make their money, though. Yeah. yeah. They wanted them to um, allow a database for developers to access to easily remove the fraudulent, fraudulently obtained keys. And then they wanted them to have like a better service to, of how to deal with the um, sellers so that they can remove people that have stolen these fraudulent keys and they can... Um, Make sure they don't sell any more. And it's not so easy for them to post fraudulent keys. Pretty much just be for the consumer instead of just being a shady company. 
They gave him 24 hours. Of course, G2A was like, whoa, whoa, what the fuck? So he didn't respond to it. So Gearbox has already pulled out. They're mm-hmm. in the process of removing their stuff now. G2A silence is pretty damning in all honesty. Yeah, they finally did mm-hmm. respond, though. Oh, they did. What and did they, they say? basically said that um, they basically lied or they covered themselves up saying, uh-huh. say, essentially, they very business savvily said, fuck you, we're going to do what we want. <sighs> of oh, course geez. they did. In of a very political business type way. Yeah. So essentially, yeah, G2A can hold this L because this pretty much exposes them as being um in the wrong when all you can say is a very nice way of saying we're gonna do this way we want to. Law we didn't do nothing. Yeah. So um and there's a ton of videos on this topic of G2A. I knew they were the gray market, I didn't know why, but then I did mm-hmm. research and found out. There's a tons of videos on this already, but yeah, G2A more or less they allow these people to post codes. They can buy these codes off of like the black market. They use stolen credit cards and stuff like that to buy like oh five hundred of these codes. Mm-hmm. Post them on G two A for half price. Sometimes they'll post codes that don't work anymore or they weren't real in the in the first place. G two A still makes money off of that purchase, so they're not going to refund you if you buy one of those codes. They thought well, we'll put a percent thing here so people know, which that's honestly wow. You know um uh. One of my one of my friends, you remember Joey, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he he bought a key one time, um, from G two A. I can't remember what game it was. Uh, I want to say like Knights of the Old Republic or mm-hmm. something. And um, so it turned out to be a a bad key. Mm-hmm. And I he he got the shield for it, um, but it, it took it took G two A like. A few days. I can't. I can't even remember how long. But it, it took him a like took them a few days for them to respond back and then like somehow give him his money back for it. it so so yeah, they they can be a little. Or, I, actually, they can be very bad at these kind of things. Yeah. Yes, they most definitely. Like, they had like a um, Reddit AMA a few months ago. Trying to like say, oh, we're not a shady business, we're clean. Uh-huh. People expose yeah, them right. instantly. Oh, they have to like course. take the whole thing down. It's Reddit. This, you can't lie to Reddit. This one guy took an L to like just prove how bad they are. He was like, now look how easy I can post these codes that aren't that aren't legit. And he got through the certification on the website, showed them that they were legit. That this Jeez. is my account. These codes I have listed aren't legit, but you accepted them. And then G Toy just banned them off the site. I'm like, uh-huh. oh, look at oh, that. Oh, God. Look yeah. at that. And they're like, oh, oh God. Uh, how do we get rid of this? Uh, Ex- ban him. Exposed in seconds. He took an L. Oh, he died geez. for our sins. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I mean, come on. That That's you're fighting the good fight right there. And I've bought things off G Toy before because. Yeah, I have too. They, they do have but, good yeah, prices. You, you but, can't blame them. Yeah, and I mean, I, you can't blame anyone for buying something there because the prices are very good yeah. yeah and it's like i i look there i'm like good price i see the guy has like a 99 percent um approval rating he coupled a, with a lot of sales yeah i'm like well this looks like it'll be a good code and it works and like mm-hmm. i probably have bought some codes that were bought with someone's stolen credit card before i don't know how they got those codes it sucks and like luckily a lot of devs aren't standing for it anymore like i know devolver digital is actively going through there deleting those codes that are on g2a's site um and then um it's happened before with ubisoft with i think far cry 4 they were selling codes that were essentially stolen and ubisoft mm. went and deactivated all of them but mm. instead of g2a getting flack ubisoft got flack because people were saying i didn't know it was obtained this way or and a lot of people didn't because yeah i mean they don't know how g2a works times you can't really blame the person who buys the keys yeah they don't know yeah g2a profits um it does their business solely in the ignorance of the customer yeah yeah that's how they work so g so um ubisoft went and had to turn those codes back on because of the complaints so ubisoft lost potentially a ton of money off of far cry 4 just from that alone Hmm. g2a's been doing this for a lot of games so, yeah, and I mean, a site where you sell your codes you don't want is needed, but don't like go and accept codes that were bought off the black market with stolen credit card info. Cause it just takes a a lot of good regulation to get these things in check. Yeah, I mean, gonna otherwise get, it'll run rampant. They're going to get yeah, sued a lot of one these... day, and then they'll be set straight, yeah. or just yeah. close their door and say, "Well, screw you guys." Then 
mm-hmm. a lot of these companies don't want to do that kind of moderation though because eventually uh, because um what what steam likes to do um is they like to have their uh, customer base um and their users moderate all their uh, stuff like uh like the whole steam curators thing was essentially um they uh put certain uh, key people on pedestals like total biscuit and jim sterling and um pc master race and whatnot oh yeah and those. um yeah 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 you remember those nobody remember those yeah. um and um that was like the whole point is like they have these curators do their work for them and like filter the good stuff from the shit and um like that's like so that was like the whole point of like um jim sterling has his uh persona of the the steam cleaner as it is and um he's like cleaning up all the shit out of steam Greenlight and off of the steam front page and it's steam uh, their valve valve is getting better at this kind of stuff because they had um they had key people um meet with them to discuss the future of steam and green light and uh whatnot and they're they're getting better at it but valve really um valve doesn't like to they have the manpower but they they're not really putting forth the effort so far to um fight against um stuff like this like the one time i saw valve put their foot down was with the whole um csgo lotto thing yeah because oh, that yeah. got really out of hand that got extremely out of hand holy shit like, it, it still kind of is too yeah and um what's actually really interesting is that the whole um um valve is getting better at this and they're starting to work towards um they they classify certain games as fake games and um uh, what that essentially is is um they sell uh, games on G2A, and they also sell games on Itch.io, and um, they um, sell oh, the God, codes to the, yeah. They sell the games, um, uh, these codes through Steam, and then people download these codes, and they uh, then convert the game into gems. And they also oh, okay, um, yeah. they uh, well no that sorry that that's not how that works. Uh. They convert the uh, the uh, gift the um, the trading cards into gems, mm-hmm. and then yeah. they use these gems to um, buy booster packs for uh, games that are actually good, such as um, um, uh, Near Autonoma and Ori mm-hmm. in the Blind Forest, or um, even even Left for Dead. And um, then these people sell these trading cards for a dollar a piece or whatever it is, or whatever the going price is, probably like 15 cents for these cards. Mm-hmm. And then they pro- that's how they make their money is they profit off of the so trading the cards. Market, then. And they make the, they are able to get these uh, trading cards for these good games through the booster packs by using what Valve calls fake games. And they're, they're identifying these games, like such as games, such as um, like, um, like digital homicide there, they would classify those as fake games they're games that are there to generate trading cards for you which then you trade in those trading cards or gems then you choose those gems to get trading cards or actual games that people care about and it's a mess the whole trading card thing is a mess and it's all valve's fault by technicality it's their fault because they created the system but it's the fault of the um the um but the bad users as mm-hmm. i guess we could call them for uh, exploiting the system in such a way to make a profit like that Everything and, has scumbags. You have to be prepared to deal with them. Yes, definitely. That's why a lot of things have to reset the... That's why a lot of games have to reset their economy after a while. Yeah. Like um, like that Minecraft server that, yep. you're, that you used to play on, Daniel. They have to reset the server every time because they... Inf- the they paid just in- users are... They just... Inf- they play users and the exploiters inflate the economy of the game. Mm-hmm. And that's why Blizzard is fighting so damn hard to not let um World of Warcraft's economy die. Is because... The economy, it's its very much, it's really funny. Video games actually really can have living, breathing economies like yep. the real world. Yep. It's really quite astounding. They Blizzard has a whole team dedicated to moderating a, a digital fake economy yeah. and it's hilarious and uh, valve needs to do the same thing however they're not they're putting they're starting to put into motion some form of effort i'm not quite sure what yet but um it's in it's just um, valve needs to start really pounding that um they de- valve needs to start steaming up their engines and start pounding the pistons in order to get something working mm-hmm yeah, because they they need to moderate this actual living breathing economy. I mean, look at CS Lotto. That is that is a literal economy. Yeah, it is. That is a literal fucking economy. I, I still can't believe how how a, a video game item can run like hundreds of dollars 
oh like, yeah real like, money like fucking runescape it's like um ridiculous like boogie um uh, 298 for example um he spent like a good seven years of his life in some games and um he would actually and um he actually did make money selling things off of i don't it wasn't runescape it was some other uh three it was like one of the first 3d uh, mmorpgs of like the 2000s oh, okay, yeah. before world of warcraft and it's just interesting that he was able to survive playing video games and selling the items he got in the game for real money. That's just interesting to me. And um, I mean, look where he is now. But um, it's just like, wow, this is a living, breathing economy. And Valve needs to put effort forth to to moderate this economy because mm-hmm. it's starting to go haywire. Definitely, I'm yeah. pretty sure when I was buying, when I bought some trading cards, I'm pretty sure I just helped support some asshole on G2A. Yeah, I, I well, any market item at that too, because I mean, because you, fuck me, I wanted that Ori in the Blind Forest badge. <laughs> yeah. I just sell them just for extra cash, just so I can buy mm-hmm. games. But yeah, I don't, I don't buy those. As they classify them fake games. The thing yeah. is, I'm a collect I'm a collector and I'm a capitalist worm. That's why I buy these amiibo. Speaking of, Nintendo announced more Zelda amiibo. And a cloud oh one. God. And and two cloud ones and two bayonetta ones. I'm <laughs> oh Lord have mercy. And that's a topic later too. <laughs> oh, that is damn it. I keep later bringing up too. later topics. I'm <laughs> but, so um, sorry. That's, that's damn good. it. <laughs> but yeah, um, so that's all I have to say about G2 and Gearbox. Any more comments or um, I just have to say that I'm looking at the um, the waveform in audition right now of our recording, and these are this is the most beautiful recording we have ever had. We're constantly hitting negative twelve. <laughs> I can see 12. the straight line in your glasses. Oh I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's beautiful. Anyway, carry on. All right, so that's you. Sorry, I just I just keep sucking my own dick. <laughs> I can't help it. It feels so good. Oh god, <laughs> <laughs> not here. I'm coming. So that's- <laughs> Oh god! So that's G Twin Gearbox. We're coming, but um, <laughs> <laughs> Bulletstorm is a great game. Check it out. And prompts to um Gearbox for being stupid and then taking an opportunity to act smart and for the consumer when they didn't know jack shit. Also, oh, where god. is Borderlands Three? I know. Um, there was a te- there was a tech demo revealed with the um Tinity. Yeah, you said they that need last more, time. But I, I want I need, more. Yeah. Well, they confirmed it's coming, so just I want more. Please understand. No. <laughs> Give me them Mad Moxie lovely titties. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Oh, next. I'm sorry, Ellie. Ellie's clearly better than oh, Moxie. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Did you see that Ellie cosplay on Facebook? Oh, oh no, I have Oh, she's amazing. <laughs> I bet she is. Like, she, like this person that. made a fat suit, and she looks directly out of the game. That is hilarious. It's amazing. Huh. Her, cosplay, her cosplay is amazing. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. Right. I just derailed us. Carry on. All right. Next topic. Um... More about Ryzen, AMD Ryzen. Mm. They announced their um five series, which is meant to compete with Intel's lower class CPUs, more, more for consumers. Well, I tell you what, when they announced that, every um every gamer's peen definitely rose to the occasion. <laughs> it has everyone has <laughs> risen. Ryzen. Yeah. These, these prices got me rising. Oh, um, definitely. So you have the fourteen hundred, which is a quad core processor running mm-hmm. it. 3.2 gigahertz at stock, you can boost it up higher. And that's that's and, actually pretty yeah. good. Mm-hmm. And it's only 169. Mm-hmm. We have a 1500X, which is a quad core running at 3.5 gigahertz stock mm-hmm. for 189. Hmm. Then we have the 1600, which is a hexa core, aka six cores. Yeah. Running at 3.2 gigahertz stock for 219. Nice. Which six cores is. This the, the this one's aimed more towards production. It's good for games too, but production people will appreciate that price. That's an yes. affordable rendering rig. That definitely is. I, the, I like that. Then the sixteen hundred X, which is hexa core three point six gigahertz stock, can be raised up higher for only two forty nine. Damn. So overall, really good prices here. I'm actually impressed with this. I hope the, the sell and take away some market share from Intel, so they have to actually get off their yeah, ass Intel and be to, innovative again. 
they no longer need to be a monopoly. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. If if um these Ryzen quad cores um they this should I hope this lights the fire under Intel's asses uh, Intel's ass so we can start getting more cores. Mm-hmm. And I know that CPUs are getting so tiny and so complex that um it's starting to get really difficult to actually engineer these things because um the transistors have gotten and the tra- the transistors and the connections between them have gotten so small that data starts actually transferring between the wires and it actually fries the cpu yeah. uh so that's why they came up with the core system um uh, i know they're really really difficult to um develop but i mean you guys have intel you've developed and you're developing a, a, a deca core processor a 10 core so i mean and your flagship cpu is still a quad core come on give us a hexa core yeah. well we do have hexa cores but that's not their flagship they model yet. yeah they have like a octa core that's still like over a thousand dollars it's yeah. just they 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 do make the best cpus they ever. really do that, that's just their single core performance is untouched yeah 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 they're that's just their trademark that's what they've been doing for since their inception you know they yeah. that they're good at what they do i just I hope can give them that but. i just hope that the ryzen um gets garners enough customers that it lights the fire under yeah, intel's I, ass I so too. that we can get so that we can start like so we can we can start like really going into hyperspeed with these prices i think it will because like i pay 300 over 300 for my processor and mine's like a quad core four gigahertz at stock mm. here they have a quad core at 3.5 which I can just overclock up to what I currently have, and it's only one eighty nine. Nice. And then like Intel's newest one, that's quad core, is um the seventy seven hundred K. That one's four point two at stock. All right. Not impressive at all. Like mm-hmm. the i seven forty seven ninety K was like the last one that was a huge. That was like a really good performance for buck type thing. The sixty seven hundred was the exact same thing, just more power efficient. Mm. That was it for that whole line. Like wow, no jump at all. Now they finally jump only by point two gigahertz. So, um, yeah, AMD, appreciate what you're doing. Keep it up. Give yeah. me until some competition because they're getting lazy. Yes, definitely. And fix your heating problems, please. Yeah, I don't want to burn my house down anymore. <laughs> the the only problem I see, the only roadblock that... Um, like, seriously, what, sorry, go on. I was just saying, like, the only roadblock they have is the fanboys. Yeah. There yeah. are fanboys for um, Intel and uh-huh. NVIDIA, and they yeah. will do anything in their power to bash AMD. Well, they're yeah, still definitely. not kind of... Are still irrelevant compared to in, in video, yeah. but hopefully they can change that. Yeah, because AMD, like, like seriously, whenever I see an AMD processor or anything like that, I I feel like I have, I feel like it has to be drenched in thermal gel. Yeah, I, I feel like it has to be, and it's obviously not the case, but still, it's like this is a serious issue, guys. I, Fix your heating issues. Overall, I I still do prefer a, an it's NVIDIA a, GPU. NVIDIA, yeah. Um, on the upside, you can heat up a hot pocket on a yeah. on an AMD <laughs> yeah. CPU. But yeah, I I do prefer an NVIDIA GPU. But uh, with these Ryzen um, CPUs, I'm 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 starting to change my opinion on them. I mm. I that's something I'll definitely consider in my my PC. The single the single most best uh, way to combat a monopoly is with competition. Definitely, mm-hmm. competition yep. is good. Monopolies are pretty darn bad. I mean, mm-hmm. look at Valve. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, what what gaming service is competing against Steam? Um, Origin. They well. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> honestly, I don't really see them as competing. I see. Mo- okay, there's this one called um, Galaxy of Games. It's it's Gog. yeah, Gog. I thought that was good old games. No. Um, Maybe there are two <clears throat> Gogs. But whatever. yeah, they 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 have their own like you know steam like service yeah. mm, and but, people uh, love them and steam probably steam a little bit more but yeah steam steam's always been there i mean they're doing good yeah, but then i i do think some of the hate for origins unwarranted like it's not a bad service it's not it doesn't like take it's just the hate for ea is all now you play yeah. can go fuck itself yes definitely um you play definitely I just, ugh, how man. so if you play their fucking connection is dog shit like you'll uh, be playing yeah, a game yeah you play itself will be like, oh, we lost connection, when, but the game is fine. When you're trying to you connect to you play, you feel like you're trying to connect to France. Yeah, I, you I seriously will, feel like that. I will say that their their servers are absolutely dog shit. Like, and like you play is the whole reason why I haven't gone back to um um 
No, 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 not Gone Home. I haven't played that. Um, fuck. I, why do I always remember the French name and not the English name? Soledad and the Coup de la Grand Gois. Um, Valiant Hearts, The Great War. Jesus Christ. Mm. How did oh. I forget that? I'm sorry. I I don't know why, but I always remember the French uh, name more than um, the uh, English name. Um, that's the reason I don't go back to Valiant Hearts is because of Uplay. Because when you launch um, Valiant Hearts from your desktop... It bypasses Steam and it launches through Uplay. Oh, God. And then it launches oh, through Steam. No. And it's like, then you have to wait 10 minutes for Uplay to connect. And then you finally connect through Steam to actually play your game. And it's annoying. But that's why I love Grow Up and Grow Home. Is because it um, it's a separate team um, from Ubisoft or Ubisoft, however you say it. And um, it, it doesn't use Uplay at all. All. It's listed on Uplay, but it does not use Uplay, mm. and that's why a lot of gamers love Grow Up and Grow Home is because because we can actually there's play. no Uplay, there's no Uplay, there's no bullshit to go through. I had to mm. go through that with um Far Cry Three. My my laptop was already weak. The laptop I'm reading these topics off of right now. Uh -huh. I launched it in Steam. It brings up Uplay. I had to activate the code on Uplay. Ugh. Then mm. I play it. Then it goes back to Steam. I'm like, yeah, Ubisoft, please. Yeah. I, I don't. I've never run into the misfortune of uh, buying a Ubisoft game on on Steam, so I I don't really. I've never experienced. I wouldn't that. recommend buying them at all. What's yeah. What's really funny though is that um, if you have a game connected through UPlay and it's connected through Steam, um, Steam does not get compromised in any way whatsoever, and I find that hilarious. Wow. It, because the reason why is because Total Biscuit has a UPlay account. And it's actually been hacked and compromised three times because Uplay is so susceptible to hackers. Jeez. His Steam is not in any danger. And he's and it, on one of his co-optional podcasts, he said, fuck it, you guys, you can have my Uplay account. Fuck it. I don't even care anymore. Because it's, it's not like, worth it's, fighting for. It's really. not yeah, worth like, fighting for, in all honesty. And like his Steam is a compromise, so what's the danger? <laughs> what is the danger? They mm -hmm. don't have his. They don't. Ha they don't have his credit card info because he bought everything through Steam and had to mm -hmm. activate it through UPlay. So, yeah. fuck it. He's never going to play Valiant Hearts anymore. And I don't think. I am going to go back to Valiant Hearts for the inevitable Let's Play. Um, in like twenty years. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to touch Valiant Hearts anytime soon. Yeah. Well, back to the main point. Competition is good. Yes. Good job, AMD. Um, and the next topic also has to deal with competition is good. The Xbox is getting a refund system. Yay. So now you can refund a game, not a season pass or DLC, but a game oh, within okay. 14 days, as long as you haven't played it for more than two hours. Essentially what Steam offers. Yeah, Steam is yeah, pretty much Steam the same. Offers. It's exactly Steam what Steam offers. Steam is for like 30 days, Steam, I, I think. think. Steam's is like, yeah, it's a little more days. I it's think like it's four hours. Days? I thought it was two weeks. I thought for sure it was two weeks. It might be. I don't know because, for sure. Um, it, I, okay, um, yeah. I may be thinking that it's like you, you have to have had, you couldn't have played the game for like more than thirty minutes. Maybe I. No, it was no, definitely it was, like two it was two or, hours. Two, hours. two. Okay, there, there's something with thirty in it that because, I'm thinking of. I, because, I don't know because there was a big controversy uh, over that for games like um, Proteus, where it's mm. it's not really a game per se. It's more like you sort of go in and you play but you don't play you just sort of watch and um you're not you, depending on the type of person you are you're not going to get more than 30 minutes of entertainment out of proteus so that was a big controversy back in the day it's like you you have two hours leeway to play the game and two weeks leeway um to own the game mm -hmm. uh, before you can return it and when people are buying games like uh, really short games like proteus or um, some other really short game, uh, they'd play it and say, okay, I've experienced enough of this. I don't care anymore. And then they'd return it. And it's like they've technically, it's like it, it becomes a really interesting situation. That and with, also um, it can happen this. Sorry, go on. That happened with um, this game called Firewatch. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, Firewatch, People, and yeah. The one guy actually asked the dev because he was like, I beat this within the time required so I could get a refund. He actually asked the dev, should I, should, am I an asshole for doing this, even though I did technically qualify? And so the dev was like, thank you for actually asking this. So they gave them their answer and all that, asking them like politely that um, we worked hard on the game, or unfortunately it was a short type of game. But um, we know that some people have enjoyed it. We know that we probably could have done better. Essentially, like all that, the guy decided not to refund it. 
but he could have it at any point in time. Yep. I could have, if I bought Super Hot from Steam, I could have refunded that game probably because I beat it in mm-hmm. like three hours. Yeah, it's a yeah. very short game. Yeah, and um, or two hours, my bad. Another game um, is um, Octodad Dadliest Catch, and funny enough, um, they didn't get hit with this at all because um, Octodad had been out way before the refund system, so they didn't get hit hard at all. But Octodad would have definitely been one of those cases. You can beat the game in under two hours, mm-hmm. and you could have experienced the entire game and then returned it, yeah. and that would have sucked definitely. Uh, but luckily for them, um, they weren't caught in that sort of situation because they've already made their money off of the octopus. <laughs> but yeah, so Xbox is getting the refund system. Funny enough, like the thing that either the same day or the next day, there was a thread on Reddit saying we should pressure Sony into doing the same thing for PlayStation. There was a thread on Reddit. A thread. It. Oh my yeah. god. And I agree. Yeah. Sony. Everyone should have this kind of refund policy. Sony, Nintendo. Also Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> They should have one too, but um, I'm glad that people were quick to make a threat for um Sony saying that they should do it because this is proof that competition is good. Let us get these pro consumer things added. I'm glad I didn't see any fanboys trying to damage control it because that yeah. would have probably pissed me off. You shouldn't you shouldn't be upset or damage control something good like this happening. The funny thing is that um this uh, that sort of uh, return policy would actually really really harm Nintendo because um, a lot of their virtual console titles are uh, NES and Super Nintendo That's games. True. And I mean you have to be a certain type of gamer to want to go back to the original Legend of Zelda. You have to be me, yeah. essentially. You have to be me if you want to go back and play Battletoads or um, mm-hmm. Ghosts and Goblins or The Legend of Zelda or Super Mario Brothers. Because if you're good, if you're good, you can beat Super Mario Brothers in ten minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Same with, like, you have to be a certain type of gamer. Games, so um, yeah. a refund policy like that, Nintendo would make zero money off of the virtual console they granted to, they're not making any money off of the virtual console at all because they're not releasing it. anything um but it's like you have to be a certain type of gamer to want to go back to older games so uh, like a refund system would actually really harm nintendo because nobody they, they wouldn't make any money nobody wants to buy nintendo entertainment system games anymore it, they'd probably modify it from like for games specifically that are like under the refund limit it won't apply or something like that. Mm, okay. They probably modify it. No one Nintendo, they do some bullshit. Yeah, they, to modify yeah, they, it. they, they I, like list every single it, genre of game. Yeah. It's like, we have a refund system. Does it apply to anything? No, we have a refund games. system. Yeah, that that's why I would be afraid to give Nintendo that, that kind of power. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, a lot of people are afraid it. to give Nintendo power. Yeah. Uh, yep. <laughs> Shut up. I didn't mean that. <laughs> that was purely unintentional, I have you know. But yeah, refund system, this is good. Speaking of Nintendo, next topic. Yay. The Switch won NPD this month, or for March, my bad. What's that? That's more or less like they were the one that sold the most hardware in terms of game and stuff, like no. all the consoles. I'm not surprised. They sold 906,000 consoles in March. I think this that's is only for the. Bad. I think this is only for the U.S. I think NPD is only for U.S. That's Might actually not that bad at all. And then Zelda sold 925,000. That's so, not bad at all. So Zelda sold more copies <laughs> yeah, than the actual then, Switch. <laughs> well, is that because also counting? Also, is that also counting the Wii U? I think so. Yeah, okay, that's that, why that explains a lot. One of my copies is there. <laughs> also, a lot of people are saying what this might be is people um buying the game just so they can support it and then going right to Steam you. Yeah, because mm, that's what yeah, I that's true. what I do. True. Maybe. So um yeah, Nintendo Switch one on NPD. Congratulations, you people are buying a product that's promoting anti-consumerist ways, <laughs> weak hardware, and a lack of games. I gotta enjoy that delicious fish husband, though. Oh my god. So, yep, yeah, enjoy supporting bullshit. No, it, it's, what's, what I find hilarious is that um, Nintendo and the Zelda team expected Princess Zelda to be everyone's favorite character in Breath of the Wild. In bursts fish husband! <laughs> Like no, like the, how the how do they not expect everyone to fall in love with this one fucking Zora? They still doesn't know what their consumers want. Yeah, well, I mean, they kind of do, but whatever. They do, but they don't at the same time. Yeah. They do, but they don't at the same time. Um, do you have the NES Classic Edition as one of the topics? NES. Oh yeah, we can talk about that real quick. Okay, They're discontinuing um, it. Yeah, they Wait, they did that the all in mini one. one. That's the yeah. thirty oh, all okay. in one uh, yeah. plug and play console. That's actually console. more than that because they gave you like they gave stores like five copies of it. 
Yeah. Yeah. They're, and they're already discontinuing it. It's like, I'm, I'm like, Nintendo, do you not want money? Do you really not want Cause money? Because I, I remember seeing a lot of people wanting to buy it and they yeah. couldn't because yeah. they I'd, were all out. I did too, in all honesty, for the uh, novelty of, hey, it's a mini NES. Look at that, yeah. bitches. And it's like, yeah, no. It's, uh, like, do you not want money, Nintendo? I mean, you're, I mean, like, you do be, it's clearly because you keep pumping out those amiibo, but I mean. Yeah. Yet again, another stupid decision by Nintendo. I, I, I mean, they're, they're, they're pumping now. out those Amiibo, but I mean, why aren't you manufacturing this hot product that a lot of people want? Like, people want the NES Classic Edition. Anti-consumerism. People, people want a... Um, These on the stun. They, people want an SNES Classic Edition. That would be cool. That would be, that cool. Would that, be cool. I feel like that'd sell more than the NES Classic Dude, Edition. Dude, like yeah. if it has like Super Mario RPG and Chrono uh, Trigger, <laughs> yeah. it's like that. That'll be that'll be a lot mm. of people will sell that. That'll yeah, that yeah, but... that'll be an ovary buster for the gamers. Like, oh my god, yeah, people that... will go absolutely batshit over that. Yeah. And I mean, like you, you have Super Mario World and mm-hmm. Super Metroid and fuck, what are some other? Um, Super Star Mario Fox. Kart, Star Fox, Mega Man, Mega Ma- Mega Which Man one? Uh, Seven. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess one of them. One seven of the or X, Mega Man whatever. X. Yeah, that that yeah. I, I got confused. Yeah, X, uh, Mega Man X. Oh boy, yeah, that yeah. would definitely be a seller right there. But yeah, they. It's just things got a lot better in the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, all the more reason why I just wish Nintendo would go third party. Please. All right, please, next Nintendo, topic, please. <laughs> All right, next topic. More about Star Wars Battlefront Two. Yes. Okay. Yes, so yes, the, yes. the um a thirty second ad that they pr- that had planned leaked online a few days ago. Oh. And it was fucking awesome. Yes. <laughs> okay. It more uh, or less oh showed God. it showed that it has all the eras the prequel era the original era mm-hmm. and the new era it showed um it also has a campaign. Does it have Jar Jar Binks? I didn't see Jar Jar in the trailer. Zero I'm out sure of ten will not buy. You'll have an option to kill him in there. Zero out of ten. I want to fucking play as him. I hope he. I hope he's the protagonist. It turns out. No. Like, I hope he kills Kylo Ren. <laughs> no. It turns out like you. You can play as Jar Jar Binks as a hero. In in this one. It lets you play as Ooh, fucking Greedo. Misa in the thinking fucking... Yusa gonna die. <laughs> it lets you play as oh, fucking God. Greedo and fucking um. Lando in the fucking Battlefront game, so it's a possibility. Uh, okay, yeah, think yeah, yeah. the force be with you. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> so the trailer showed more or less um, soldiers on the ground of a planet. They showed the second Death Star's explosion. Ooh. And mm-hmm. then she said, this is where the real war began. The Finn, um, avenge our emperor. And it showed some, camp- some campaign footage. It said, join multiplayer battles. It showed Darth Maul about to fight Yoda. Darth Maul. Oh it showed God. Rey running through the forest. Darth Maul, really? Yeah. Yep. He was about to fight Yoda. Yes. About to fight Yoda, so that's gonna be awesome. It showed um Rey running through the forest. It showed I forgot what they're called. Those creatures on Hoth that run. Oh, the Tauntauns. Tauntauns. It yeah. showed someone riding a Tauntaun nice. running into someone. It showed um Who's Rey developing this? Dice, and I forget there's another studio making the campaign for it. Mm. Oh, okay. And um, it showed um, Ray running through the forest, and you saw Kylo Ren, and then it showed the title, which had um, Ray on the left, um, Darth Maul on the right, and what looked like a normal Imperial trooper in the middle. Nice. Mm. And they're supposed to show off the trailer, the full one, tomorrow at Star Wars Celebration in Florida, which I kind of wish I was at right now because I have no reason not Tickets to be there. Tickets are seventy five dollars. I have a reason not to be there right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I so they actually showed that on the news and I was like, oh, that's what that is. And then they said tickets are seventy five dollars. And then I just left. <laughs> I, uh, this oh, makes. No, I mean, mind. it's awesome. Oh, like God. they showed off um the poster for the Last Jedi, and they showed mm-hmm. off a trailer for the Last Jedi today. And I watched it live on. Oh, the did Facebook. they really? I haven't yeah, seen. We can I watch haven't that seen after. it yet. Yeah, and, we're, um, we're definitely speaking watching. Speaking of that. Lost Jedi, that's a pre-order bonus because it is an EA game. You get access oh, to yeah. a Lost Jedi hero. Oh, great. Probably immediate access, because you can get them all eventually. Mm-hmm. Who, and who that? They didn't say who, and this is a leak, so we just said that on the bottom. Okay, They'll probably go enough. more into depth tomorrow with the um, official reveal of the trailer. Fair enough, I suppose. So, right. um, yeah, this looks cool. The mm-hmm. first Battlefront was a major disappointment, because <laughs> it was only the original. Okay, um, I, I, I think we're back. Um, I am so sorry. Um, 
This wouldn't be a recording if um, something went horribly wrong. Uh, we encountered an RTII error in um, Adobe Audition. Uh, we didn't lose the podcast because, well, obviously we didn't lose it because you're still hearing us. Um, it's just that uh, the Audition decided to shut down on us. Um, uh, we were just talking about Bottlefront. Um, sorry, uh, continue on. I think I covered everything at that point. Um, you were asking who that was. I was don't know yet they just said get an exclusive character maybe they'll add finn or something finn or poe dameron to the game since it's all eras okay so yeah maybe that all right so what is our next topic uh, my computer had to get restarted but i remember the next topic after battlefront was uncharted the lost legacy mm-hmm. um my log announced the official release date of that for august 22nd along with a new cutscene of the game showing chloe and Nadine on the boat Mm -hmm. um, looking at an artifact, her figuring out how to unlock it, and then showing them where to go on the map. Um, they, Uncharted 4 had this... Well, before I get to that, The Lost Legacy started out as single-player DLC as an expansion. It turned into its own thing because Night Dog are kind of like overachievers. So they wanted to essentially... They got all these ideas together. They're like, we can't just waste this on like a four-hour type experience or something like that. So it pretty much became a full-blown, like, next Uncharted game, like, almost Uncharted 5. So, yeah, we're getting a new installment, and Daniel still hasn't played Uncharted yep. 4. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I still need to get a PS4. Hashtag it, Daniel, PS4. <laughs> yes. Help me. <laughs> so, yeah, it'll be $40. It'll have a physical release. And Uncharted 4, oh my God, it'll also have access to Uncharted 4's multiplayer servers, so you can play the game like that, too. Ah. If for some reason you buy that in Uncharted 4. But, um, yeah, glad, glad that's there. Um, and then Uncharted 4, back when it first came out, and a little bit before, they had this thing called the Triple Pack, which was, it, back then, their idea of the season pass, you would get two map packs for free, along with um, single-player expansion. You'd also get this by buying the Uncharted 4 Digital Deluxe Edition. Then later on, they said no maps were going to be free. And, oh, my bad, before the... Triple pack was twenty five dollars. Then they said, "No maps are going to be free. Let's just um, put out some exclusive guns and stuff like that that you can pay for." So, so triple pack users then got guns. They put out like three guns at once. They give triple pack users like usually one long gun and one pistol, or just one gun in total. And I was like, "Wow, I wasted my money on this." Then um, they canceled triple pack and made the explorers pack, which was like thirty or maybe the same price. Same thing as mine, except you got um. I think it was just to charge more because they realized then at that point, you know what? It's going to be more than worth $25. So then they canceled the Explorers pack later on. Then they announced Lost Legacy. Now I know it's $40 and now we know why. So essentially, I still got my money's worth a little bit more than that because I got the guns to get out for free for me. And I'll get the Lost Legacy, which is 40 bucks. And it's like, uh, it's the, the, the um, Lost Legacy is like 10 hours, you said, before our recording Yeah, there was, a, there was a statement from Naughty Dog saying their creative team had this idea for a game that, that could be 10 hours. That's, so that's, it probably won't be 10, but it most likely will be at least around t 10, uh, 10 That's hours. another campaign. Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. No wonder they made that uh, standalone. That's pretty good, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you guys are getting a fifth installment, technically. Yep. yep. Applause to Naughty Dog. Yep. And um, forward to that. And then there's yeah. also, um, I won't get this, but if you pre-order the game from the store or the PSN store, you'll get uh, an exclusive theme, and they'll give you a copy of Jack and Daxter, the Precursor Legacy, on PSN. Because also, a few weeks ago, jumping into another topic, just quickly sidestepping, Jack and Daxter games have been announced for PS4 yes. through the PS2 emulation system. Yes. This includes Jack 1, Jack 2, Jack 3. And finally, Jack X, because that did not come to the PS3 collection that we got um, last gen. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, it won't have multiplayer for Jack X. But the games will all have the standard features you get with PS4 games, like trophies, recording, streaming, activity feed, and all the other features you get. Finally. So, so a Let's Play is actually pretty doable now. Yeah. Without having to buy, like, an ass load of technology just to get the capture card to work. Yep. Mm-hmm. And now, um, I know Jack 2, 3, and X had support for 16 by 9 resolutions, so those will be full screen, no problem. Jack yep. 1, I think, was only 4 by 3, so that'll have black bars on the side. Yeah. But at the same time, it'll still be a little bigger picture because it's being uprendered to 1080p. Mm -hmm. 
So should look good, and it's the PS2 version, so none of those PS3 collection bugs and stuff like that. Yeah. Should be good. Looking forward to that. And you get the first one for free with um, the Lost Legacy pre-order. And going off prices, previous games, if they're first-party PS2 games, they're normally $10. If they're third-party games, they're normally $15 just for like, extra licensing fees and stuff like that. So these should all probably be $10, so maybe like 40 total. Maybe they'll have a bundle where you can get them all for a cheaper price Yeah, I'm together. sure. The I'm PS4 sure they'll do collection. something like that. So, yeah, that, I'm glad that happened. Hopefully, they'll do Ratchet and Clank and Sly Cooper in the future because I really want to play those again. Mm-hmm. The PS3 port of Deadlocked is fucking horse shit. <laughs> there are so many bugs. The frame rate takes a hit. And if there's a video glitch where every time a character stays still for too long, their body slightly shifts back in a different position. What? It's weird as hell. I'm like, what? That wrong? is weird. I don't There's, ever remember any of those. Like, watch the cutscenes. Like, oh yeah, well, the, the cutscenes we know were were pretty bad. Yeah, like that. The gameplay itself was the same more or less, but the frame rate dropped a lot. They changed mm. the font. I don't know why they changed. They the font. changed what font? For like the um, on screen words, they changed the font. Why? I have no idea why. That <laughs> okay. is such an odd choice. Like, did, did they think that the font wasn't readable? Did I they not know. like a sans serif font? I have no idea. But yeah, so hopefully they'll put that out on PS4 so I can play the correct version of that that's, game. That's weird. That's, that's really weird. Rate. So yeah, that's happened. And the last topic I had was about Next Machina. Yep. Going full circle. Next Machina is having a sign up PC beta that will start on April 21st and end on may 1st and they just want to get feedback from the community find out what they need to change if they need to change anything at all stuff like that and next machina is a beautiful game you should find out what it is there it's from the guys that made rizoka and stardust hd the voxels in that game are crazy rizoka like, is amazing rizoka a good game and probably my favorite launch game for the ps4 and in Resort Gun, the voxels never got crazy until the end of the level when it blows up everything. Mm-hmm. And the voxels went, hey, shit. Yeah. Ape shit, my bad. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but um, yeah, here, the whole level's like that for next box. I'm going to show them later. Mm-hmm. Look up a trailer if you don't know what the game is. It's coming to PS4 and PC, so pick it up. Um, the recommended spec was a 970. Damn. And I'm like, for oh a game God. like this, god yeah. damn, those voxels must be obliterating the GPU. Yeah, well, I mean, um, each one of the little voxel pic, little voxel pixels is um, a 3D rendered model. Mm-hmm. So yeah. imagine having hundreds of thousands of those flying everywhere at once. I'm surprised. I'm surprised Rizogun looks as good as it does. And oh my god, what? And they got running 4K native on the PS4 Pro. Oh my god, <laughs> that's crazy. How that the really hell? Is. And Rizogun didn't know how optimized too. Apparently, mm-hmm. that's really good. Um, and it allows like super sampling. They added HDR to it. Look out, Naughty Dog! Oh, we have some. I yeah. really yes. want to see how that game looks in HDR. Yeah, because oh, the that lighting in there is already really um, good. An LSD trip. Yeah. So hopefully, well, what? hopefully they said it'll come out in summer on their recent post for Next Machina. So hopefully we'll see more soon. Nice. All right. So um, that's all the topics I had. Now for just what we're playing, Daniel. Yeah, yeah just the usual Minecraft. I have haven't been playing oh, much. Casual. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you, you got to start from somewhere before you get good. I, I can tell you what, this bitch can snipe with a bow. <laughs> yeah, so he's you fucking watch scary. yourself. Granted, I, I, can, I, can, I can snipe with a bow too, but like this <laughs> this guy right here. He, he also knows how to build some crazy shit. Like, yes. His houses are, always take like three hours to make. They do. Well, and 25 I, acre statue. It's, it's, I mean, yes. the most ambitious thing that I made was a giant egg. <laughs> And no, yours yeah, is like this legit house with like well, these beautiful designs. It's always, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was an egg, Eggman thing. Yeah, the, um, the, the, the uh, like Eggman's. Base. I remember uh, we were in a mesa, I think. Yes, uh, and you built like this huge fucking egg. Yes, yeah, I remember that, and it had like scaffolding yep. that you mm-hmm. used for pathways to walk around. Yep. Oh my god, it was it was a crazy build. Yeah. Um, the egg was always fun. Like, like it was funny. That was in uh, that was senior year of high school, and I was in um, what well, was like economics history? Or, or no, it was it was the United States history, and um, was it no? It was some sort of class about the Constitution or whatever. Oh god. And um, I can't remember what exactly it was hmm. called. Um, War, uh, no, no, no. Uh, World of Warcraft. Oh, shut up. 
I know what you're getting at. But yeah, yeah, but like in my free time in that class, I was literally, I literally had graph paper and I was designing that fucking house. <laughs> oh my god! Layer by layer. Wow. <laughs> And I, cool. I legit had graph paper to design this yeah. thing. And I was like, okay, these squares are going to be dedicated to the bed. And this, this is going to be the <laughs> walls. And this is not going to... It's like, uh, I, I think I still have those papers floating around somewhere. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, that was a long time ago. It's, it's too bad that I lost that server. Yeah. But anyway, um, and that, that was the server that started the tradition of the communal chest. Mm. Yeah, it did, yeah. didn't it? Huh? Yeah. Right. I've been playing super hot, super hot, super hot. fun game. I um wish it was longer, but fun game. Um, I went back to Star Wars Battlefront and got my shit pushed in. <laughs> Damn, peace on PC. You have no, <laughs> but I really have to take a shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so that's fun. I got wrecked, but at least I was getting wrecked with some high quality and oh authentic God. visuals to the to the original trilogy. And then recently, I bought Gears of War Ultimate Edition on Windows Universal platform on on PC. Fun game. I just wish the multiplayer wasn't dead because now when I beat the campaign, I'll have nothing left to do, except probably buy Gears Four. But I don't want to. I, I, I want to skip three games. I'd be missing two, three, and Judgment. So I'm not. I kind of want to play the other games first. So Windows Universal Windows platform is UWP. So yeah. United Whores Poop. What? That's, that's a good summary of the quality of the yeah. Universal Windows platform. United how, Horse Poop. How the fuck did you just come up with that? It, it works. Because oh, it, you are we a just creature do of it. chaos. I can come up with more. Oh, God. It just works. <laughs> and it describes them perfectly. Jonathan isn't here. We don't need to come up with really inaccurate. Um, yes, Daniel Rivers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's an inside joke. But Shut up, Samuel Valentine. Yes, <laughs> Samuel Valentine and I, Jock Rush. I, I hate that fucking <laughs> I, name. I fucking love it. I hate that name more than Jake Rush. <laughs> no, it, we're, it's Jock <laughs> Rush. I hate it so much. <laughs> oh, my God. So, so yeah, that's all, all right. I've been playing. So, without further ado, we're going to just kill the rest of the podcast <laughs> by letting <laughs> Jacob discuss his time with ukulele. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I'm going to talk about the games that I've been playing. Uh, first off, I would actually like to talk about uh, products that I'm going to be buying in the future. Um, Nintendo announced some new Amiibo, um, Zelda Amiibo, and some Smash Brothers Amiibo. Uh, they announced um, Young Link from Majora's Mask, um, Link from Twilight Princess, Link from Skyward Sword, and I think there was another one, but I can't exactly remember who. Um wow. Uh, no, no, no! I'm talking about Zelda Amiibo right now. Um, I can't remember who the other ones were, but yeah, more Amiibo. Shit, I'm gonna be buying some more shit. God damn it! <laughs> Anti-consumer. I <laughs> plastic figures. <laughs> I can't. I can't help it. I just. I love these stupid I little fucking Amiibo things. up my ass. <laughs> yes, the texture from Link's sword feels so good. <laughs> but they don't love you. Well, damn. <laughs> I have nothing to say to that. We have a pedophile nah, smile over here. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'd, I'd prefer the tip of Shin Godzilla's tail, oh, anyway. Oh, God. <laughs> Ew. Okay. And uh, another, some other Amiibo they announced were um, uh, Cloud um, and Bayonetta for Amiibo. In the and Emo and original version. Yep. And um, they have uh, two different versions of each of these figures. Uh, for Bayonetta, they have the Bayonetta 1 and Bayonetta 2. What's up, guys? Von Red One here, and unfortunately, we had a technical snafu with the audio for the rest. We didn't lose any of the main topics, but we did lose the part where Jacob went in depth and discussed his thoughts on ukulele. I apologize. Jacob apologized a lot, and hopefully, we'll have it fixed out next time. We had some new tech, new equipment being used, and this happened. It actually happened twice. But uh, the first time we were able to catch it before it was too bad. But this time the whole rest of the audio here was just corrupt. Like it just sounds like. <laughs> so, unfortunately, bad news. But at the same time, we still had a full podcast. Jacob will comment in the description and list his um, full thoughts there. But basically he said that the game is exactly what they promised and nothing more. A solid 7 out of 10, and nothing more. And you can't recommend it to people that aren't fans of the original Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie. So, on that note, 
Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to Tech Business Podcast where we make mistakes, but it's okay. And you can follow Jacob on Twitter at Retro Tech Coms and subscribe on YouTube, Retro Tech Coms. Daniel doesn't have a active social media channel. And you can find me on Facebook, not Facebook, you can find me on Twitter and YouTube at VonRed1 on both. And I recommend you not subscribing to me on Twitch because I never use it. Until next time, see you, see you guys next time. Peace.